Mark Gilchrist and wood pigeons have something in common. It's not speed or agility, the ability to breed all year round or muscle-bound legs. It's their love of peas. As a result, Mark has two things to do today. Protect the farmer's pea crop from hungry pigeons and create a quick, tasty meal for us using, you guessed it, pigeons and peas. There's the peas. As you can see, they're getting tough now. If you squish them, they're more like, you know, this, the dried peas you get at home rather than sweet peas. On the subject of sweet peas, well done little pea. Good sausage. Right, off you go, go on, get on. There is an important message here, which we'll get to later. First, let's get Harvey, the farmer's son, set up on one side of the crop. And it looks like he'll need planning permission for his hide. We do like to see a well-constructed blind, but before we start taking the mick, bear in mind it's a breezy day and knocking the posts in might be a lesson for us all. Harvey doesn't get to shoot very much and he's keen to learn yeah, about sorry, hides and decoys. He's also keen to learn about preparing the birds for the table. I'm going to go down like that and then turn when you hit the bone. And then you just take the uh, last bit off here. All birds are the same shape so you know if you can do a pigeon you can do a pheasant, you can do a duck. Another tip that I found when I was making game pies is if you put all the meat in water, all the pellets fell out. I don't know why, something to do with it floating and relaxing, but of the sort of 300 that come out of the gun, I should think no more than 10 will actually hit the bird. It's interesting how quickly people respond to a challenge and the chance of learning a new skill. Harvey's friend Yoshi also gets stuck in. I've never plucked a pigeon before. You should have come out this afternoon. You could have shot a pigeon, plucked a pigeon, eat a pigeon. I'd like to be able, I'd really, you know, like I'd love to be able to kill it and eat it and do it, and I, I think I could. Oh, it's wolf. Oh, there you go. The girl who was a vegetarian for two <laughs> years <laughs> and can't kill bugs. Don't worry, we're saving you. It feels like quite a good thing to... Sorry, I'm putting feathers everywhere. No, don't worry. Maybe. Very fluffy. A former vegetarian recently forced into carnivorous submission by the vegetarian's kryptonite, the bacon sandwich. Talking of vegetarians, we're going to get on our soapbox now. A lot of us will have had conversations about shooting with a veggie friend or family member. For many, not all, it's a conscious decision because they don't like the idea of killing animals. But the truth is that veggies are responsible for a pigeon becoming an ex-pigeon, a rabbit becoming an ex-rabbit, and we've asked Mark to set the record straight. Vegetarians are fairly complicit in the killing of animals, even when they eat grain. Um, the story is very simple. No matter where you are in the world, you have pests. Let's just take England, for example. You've got uh, rabbits, pigeons and deer would be the biggest pests. So every time you eat a bowl of Weetabix, slice of bread, can of beer, mayonnaise, anything like that, um, you're killing animals. You might think you're not. I'm afraid you are. This is how grains are produced. The farmer financially can't afford to let his crop get eaten by pests. Uh, it's him that takes the cost. The supermarkets don't say, terribly sorry, you, you, you've lost 10% of your crop to pigeons. You know, we'll give you, we'll compensate you for that. I can't think of a food source which is produced on a large scale, which doesn't involve killing animals. It all, all comes from a farm. They've all got pests. All the pests get controlled. It's that simple. Back to our pigeon prep, and it's time for the precious peas, and Mark is making the pea puree. Mark blends the peas with mint and olive oil with plenty of seasoning. Just olive oil, salt, pepper, mint, peas, and then hot water, because we're using frozen peas. About right. It takes just a few minutes and can be done while he is pan frying the pigeon. Let's return to the shooting and Mark's Mossberg pump action from York Guns is still doing its job. The pigeons are not decoying brilliantly, but there is a lot of passing interest. The pea crop is 150 acres and having just two guns means we are struggling to keep all of the birds in the air. One pigeon is having a really bad day. It's injured, but before dawn the dog can get to it, a bird of prey drops onto it. 
but it doesn't stick around. If anyone can help us with the species and why it might not have taken the pigeon, please let us know. Now, as we're enjoying the soapbox, Mark has another issue. He's concerned that people who are coming into shooting spend money on the gun and the scope and shirk on other things like eye protection and hearing. Like this chap snapped in South Africa. Mark's lucky enough to have Sens Digital as a sponsor, but you don't have to spend hundreds, you just need to take it seriously. You've got to use something. It's just so, it's so important. You can't, you know, once your hearing's gone, it's gone. It never comes back. For the people that have gone out and spent, you know, 10 grand on their first gun, it'd be as well getting a 600 quid gun and getting something like this done, because these chaps will last so much longer than the gun will. An average gun will only last 20,000 shots, which, you know, for, for some people, that's a long time. And you know, that's, that's a year for me. Back to the food and Mark is pan frying the pigeon breasts in olive oil and some fresh rosemary. He likes to keep the breast pink. If the cooker is hot, a couple of minutes either side should do. The biggest tip with pigeon is don't overcook it. So I want to keep it nice and pink. We're going to just do it for a couple of minutes, really fast on one side, flip, flip them all over. Another couple of minutes, take it off the heat, give it five minutes to relax, slice it up nice and thinly and load the wraps up. Mark bags about 50 birds, so plenty for our gathering, and Harvey has about 12. Opening the crop shows just how big the pigeon pea problem is. Imagine the impact of a few thousand birds. And those are the peas. This crop's actually stuff for them. Right, the finishing touches. Some warmed wraps, a layer of pea puree, a generous helping of prime pigeon meat finished off with a smothering of yoghurt. And hey presto, Mark's rolled a fat one. And it's delicious. Two of us plucked it out in a couple of minutes. Mm. Ten minutes in the pan, a bit of pea puree. We've got a really classy meal for nothing. Very easy to do. You don't have to do it in a really, really fancy way. Just simplicity is often the best. So next time you're out shooting pigeons, why not rustle up a quick meal in order to have your post-match debrief? It's cheap, it's easy, and you never know, you might convert a few veggies at the same time. Sorry, why are you still here? <laughs>